Hey everyone, um, this is Vlad, I, Vlad Zamfir. I'm giving an EdCon talk, a retake of a talk I gave called What is Ethereum? Which I gave kind of tired and sick and didn't really, wasn't really prepared. And now I'm much more well rested, feeling much better. Also not super prepared, but the talk should go better just because I'm in a better kind of a headspace. So the question is, or the talk is, you know, what is Ethereum? Like, and the, this is the name of the talk. And the point of the talk is kind of to get you to come away feeling like you don't know what Ethereum is, like you have an opportunity to ask yourself and to develop your answer to what is Ethereum um, and to understand like your relationship with Ethereum in a way that's maybe a little bit more realistic or a little bit less based in, you know, presumptions about what Ethereum is that like it turns out after our analysis are aren't so good, aren't so, aren't so reliable. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm, one of them is called, what is Ethereum supposed to be? And the other is, what do people expect from Ethereum? And so what, what is, what is Ethereum supposed to be is kind of a, it's kind of a topic about what do people think that Ethereum is? There's a bunch of theories that people have or things that people say that Ethereum is or would maybe think that Ethereum is. But, and we're, so I'm just gonna cover some of those and then see in more detail why they aren't really, um, why, why, why it may not be kind of as first meets the eye. So you might think that Ethereum is technology. Uh, and this is the most common myth about the nature of Ethereum or the common, most common supposition, which I question about the nature of Ethereum. You know, people think Ethereum is technology. They think of Ethereans or like the core uh, as being kind of fundamentally uh, or, or kind of in it for the technology or for the way that we use, can make use of the technology. And certainly Ethereum has technology. I mean, we're all kind of familiar for listening into this call about uh, of, of, of something called the Ethereum protocol and a particular in deployment of the Ethereum protocol that we refer to as Ethereum. Um, and, you know, this deployment of the protocol is like a consensus protocol, a blockchain consensus protocol that's kind of public and find, follows a variant of uh, the Nakamoto consensus protocol that Satoshi Nakamoto invented for Bitcoin. Um, and, 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 you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum to some extent look and feel like protocols because, you know, you can go to the GitHub, uh, of, or where you can look at the, you can look at the source code and you can kind of understand to some extent what Ethereum is by understanding the software that we can imagine is, uh, makes up Ethereum. You know, there's like the Ethereum virtual machine, there's the the blockchain, there's like Web3 interface, there's all sorts of stuff, you know, that you can access from any implementation of Ethereum. Um, and you might say, okay, well, this stuff is clearly Ethereum. Um, but, but whenever we're asking like, what is Ethereum, we have to be kind of clear about whether or not we're looking at only like a narrow piece of the picture or, or, or not. And as soon as, and, but even from this piece of the picture, we can kind of quickly see that this technology doesn't actually make sense without economics. Like if you just deploy another instance of Ethereum, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work in the same way unless the tokens that are being replicated by the consensus protocol have a price, right? Like cryptocurrency doesn't work without economics. Public blockchain protocols don't work without economics. Like Ethereum doesn't work without economics. And so you might, so, so we kind of expanded our story here from being like, okay, Ethereum is technology, but Ethereum is kind of technology supported by economics or like together with some economics or together with some, you know, uh, system or something that is providing security to the protocol. Because, you know, what we learned from doing blockchain and crypto analysis is that like these protocols aren't secure and without the tokens having a price without the, because the token is giving you a price you know, secures the network against an adversary who can just spin up lots of computers. Um, and so Ethereum, you might think is 
you know, an economy, this kind of like crypto economy, and uh, that that is like a, associated to and together with this protocol. But even that too ends up kind of failing because if you start to look at economics really closely, uh, economics doesn't work without law. The, econo the, cr the crypto economics of these protocols don't work without assumptions about the way that the protocol is governed, about the way that disputes about protocol definitions are resolved. You know, the, 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 the economics of Bitcoin is supported by the government's commitments to 21 million Bitcoins in, issue, in existence. You know, the, the, the economics in Ethereum is supported by some kind of norms that we have that prevent uh, an arbitrary amount of Ether from being created and destroying the economics of, of Ethereum. Um, so if you if you try to understand it, it just in terms of the tech and its economics, it, it kind of quickly starts to rely on, on on legal assumptions, on governance assumptions about the nature of the blockchain, the cryptocurrency, and you know this not just its nature technically or economically, but from the point of view of law. And specifically, we think about uh, crypto law in particular as being a, the kind of area of law that is is relevant uh, in particular to, um, to 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 making Ethereum work. So we can try to think of Ethereum as this kind of crypto blockchain technology, plus this crypto economics, plus this crypto law. But then still, this doesn't. You know, you start. You'll start to quickly realize if you start to do this analysis that this you can't really explain crypto law and crypto economics just in terms of the tech. You have to explain it in terms of uh, the kind of background, culture, beliefs, the people that are using it, right? Because law, institution, so is economics, and ultimately, so is technology. Um, and so, you could try to think of Ethereum just in terms of these kind of component parts, but those parts don't make much sense without understanding the kind of human side. You know, we have people in Ethereum, you know, they're commonly called Ethereans. Um, and, you know, sometimes we refer to the Ethereum community. Uh, and certainly there are communities associated with Ethereum. Sometimes people think about it like, as if there's just one community, normally referring to the STEM community, like science, tech, engineering community that's associated with the technology. But there are many communities actually in Ethereum and it, communities kind of like take care of them that the Ethereum ecosystem as, as a whole does not, right? It is much broader than just the Ethereum the community. Um, and, and the ecosystem includes lots of different kinds of infrastructure. It includes um, people, but also corporations and also, you know, nonprofits and associations and, um, you know, forums and all, all sorts of different kinds of, you know, infrastructure, technical, legal, economic, um, that, that help support Ethereum. Um, but still, if you think about, if you try to think of Ethereum as like, okay, this tech, crypto economics, crypto law, plus a bunch of people, it's still not actually a very good idea of like what Ethereum is because, you know, Ethereum is something that is kind of living in people's heads uh, and has a con or in some way, it's some, some of Ethereum anyways, is, it exists kind of in people's expectations and realities and plans. And it's not just, and, and that stuff has structure. It's not just a matter of arbitrary agreement or, you know, Ethereum is whatever the Ethereum community decides Ethereum to be. And that's sort of like an unsustainable view because Ethereum has substance. Um, and it like very much is something. And it's not just kind of people's collective hallucination. So this brings us now to kind of the second part of the talk, which is kind of about what Ethereum is to people in the sense of 
how, what do they expect from Ethereum? What are the people, why do they act like they believe in Ethereum? Like what's their ask? Like what's their posture vis-a-vis -vis Ethereum? You know, um, there are a bunch of kind of technical expectations that people have. People expect Ethereum to scale. People expect Ethereum to move to proof of stake. People expect smart contracts to become better. People expect, you know, oracles for their smart contracts. People expect the blockchain to be like a property registry. People expect uh, DeFi. People expect unstoppable autonomous software. <clears throat> people expect that like the price of Ether will go up and people expect that it'll compete with Bitcoin and do much better than Bitcoin. People believe that Ethereum is somehow m more flexible and survivable than Bitcoin, which is kind of supposed to be more immutable. Um, you know, people kind of believe in upgrading Ethereum in the way in a way that they don't believe in upgrading Bitcoin. Um, people have all sorts of expectations and all sorts of reasons that they have hope that Ethereum will provide them with something that they kind of think that they want or will benefit from or need. You know, Ethereum is, in, in some way, you know, we have a lot of expectations about Ethereum and Ethereum is defined somewhat by these expectations as kind of people try to make Ethereum technically, economically, legally, institutionally on all different fronts, better and better at serving kind of them. Um, and so people have a lot of expectations and they want a kind, and, and, and they kind of look for, look at Ethereum um, as a kind of, you know, tool or platform or community or <clears throat> all sorts of different kinds of stuff like, you know economy <clears throat> like 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 digital jurisdiction you know people have all sorts of different kind of um assumptions about what ethereum is that is going to help them build their great thing that is going to help them you know decentralize the world unbank the bank you know all you know like provide earning opportunities for people to do good and in, in work in DAOs. You know, people have um, a lot of kind of things they want to do with Ethereum, a lot of promises they kind of expect Ethereum to, you know, kind of implicit promises that they expect Ethereum to satisfy. Um, <clears throat> and I think, you know, in, in kind of piecing all this together, you know, it'll, it'll help us understand, you know, what is Ethereum? Because Ethereum isn't, you know, just technology. It's not just economics, it's not just crypto law. It's not just an uh, institution, you know, but it's also not just the people in the community and the ecosystem. You know, it, 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 it has a, and it's also not just defined by our expectations and use of it, but all of these things make up Ethereum and, other things too that I'm sure that you know that I haven't named um, and so Ethereum is kind of really really complex and this actually makes it um, you know super interesting not just academically or from an educational point of view but also as a basis for solutions and for doing things with Ethereum that are actually useful in the world to like a world far outside of crypto uh, because if we regard Ethereum as just being technology or just being crypto economics, just being crypto law, or just being any kind of any anything that you can quickly and easily bound the boundary of, you know, we by defining it by, by defining Ethereum, we kind of restrict the possibilities and therefore make it less useful. And so I think, you know, and I so I think it's actually kind of incumbent on us to let go of some of these narratives that we have, like false narratives about Ethereum being just technology, about Ethereum being apolitical, about Ethereum being illegal, and to kind of instead understand that Ethereum is, includes technology, law, politics, all sorts of other stuff, and not just in a, in a way that allows us to 
do more with Ethereum, to have a more complex and rich relationship with Ethereum. And in order to um, develop the identity of Ethereum going forward so that we're not kind of stuck in the past as the world moves. Anyways, that's been my 15 minutes. Um, thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed the talk here and I hope you come away with questions and with uh, incentive or interest in developing what your idea of Ethereum is. Thanks, thanks so much, everyone. Really appreciate um, being invited to speak at EdCon and staff for being super helpful with my talk and everything. Thanks, thanks so much.